Hello and welcome to an episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and I'm again here with my little puppy, Coffee. You can barely make her out on camera, she's so dark actually. <laughs> but today we've got another unboxing video for you guys. So I'm gonna let her wander off and we can get right into it. So, got this lovely, lovely package that arrived from awesomecollector.com and in it is a figure that I have been dying for for years. I've been waiting for them to both make this figure and for it to come out and then for me to pre-order it and then for it to ship out and get here. So it's been a long time waiting for this one. And that is, or at least it should be, the brand new SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2004 figure from the 2004 movie Godzilla Final Wars, which as many of you guys know, is one of my all-time favorite movies out there. <laughs> I know that movie, for whatever reason, has very mixed opinions, but I am definitely on the I absolutely love it side of that argument. So, when I found out that Monster Arts is actually finally putting out a Godzilla from this film, I was super excited. Really, really hyped for this one. So, we just got this flap opening up here, so here. Like so, and there it is. Lovely. Good packaging, seems like it's not damaged or anything, which is very, very reassuring, because one of the last things I unboxed came with a horrendously dented box, though the figure itself was fine, thank God. The, uh, the BNN Mechagodzilla figure. But this one seems to be all intact. We've still got the bubble wrap to remove, but we can already see we got the box under there and we can even see the figure just barely peeking through under there. So that's really, really cool. Oh, where are my scissors? Let's get this thing open. I've had this thing sitting on my desk all night, just waiting for me to have some time in the daylight to actually do this unboxing. Because if you guys don't know, I actually try to do most of my unboxings during the day because that way I get a more even, more natural lighting for them, although I still supplement that with lamps, but it's never the same at night. Careful not to actually scratch up the box or anything like that, ideally. And there we go. So this can go away. Ah, oh, there it is. Check that out. SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2004. And doesn't that just look lovely? So I really dig this classic SH Monster Arts style box with the openings in it, the windows, and the slash marks across it. It's really cool. I'm glad they're bringing these ones back because for quite a while we've had a lot of boxes that didn't include those, just the sort of online only versions or whatever you call them. They, they don't always have these hollow openings. So that's really nice. But one thing I do miss with these boxes, the newer ones, is I do recall that the older boxes seem to play around with making some elements on the box glossy and some matte. And that way you can really get the pictures to pop and stand out. So traditionally I think they'd have a matte background, but the actual image of the figure would be glossed. So it would be shiny and it would really pop. Same with some of the, the logos and things. You know, I'm going to put this box in my cupboard and not look at it for a few years or whatnot so it's not really all that big a deal but it is just a little nitpick about the newer boxes that I think they could still improve if they really wanted to but again don't really care what I do care about is the figure itself so let's open this one up and see what we got in here like with a lot of these monster arts figures I'm gonna open it from the bottom Pretty much for no other reason than it helps the top of the box stay looking nicer, and that's the more focal point of the box, I guess. It's just become a habit at this point, but I've, I've done it both ways, so it doesn't really matter. And then we just got to lever up this, and this is always tricky, and I used to have a nice metal ruler that I could do this with without damaging the box at all, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get away with using just a pen. Got a little, little method to kind of pop these out which involves like pushing forward and down and then up in a specific way. And then, yep, this opens up without any creases in it. Very nice. Ooh, already got that classic Monster Arts plasticky smell. 
It's a good smell. It, it reminds me of the good times. Just like today, when we got a brand new figure. There it is. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. So, box, I'm gonna go aside. I mean, I could show you the box. It's your standard box on the back with a bunch of pictures of the figure. Pictures of the figure on the front, the side, looking really cool actually. And just a nice plain blue backing in the box, which is fitting because this Godzilla spent a lot of time in Antarctica in the film, so a nice sort of flat blue kind of fits this guy. Alright, so we're just going to pull this guy apart, and there's no tape by the looks of it, so it's pretty simple. There we go. Put that in there. Of course we have this floating bit right here which holds the figure in place, and these are always a pain to kind of put back in the box once you've taken the figure out for the first time. Looks to be like there's another one protecting his dorsal spines, so that's really nice. They, they actually put in a little effort with that, and we've got the clear plastic that these Monster Arts figures always have. I almost always forget to kind of make these videos really broad, because I'm always assuming that everyone watching these is already super familiar with the Monster Arts line and what it's all about, but again, for the unfamiliar, the SH Monster Arts line uh, about six inch scale figures of classic Godzilla Kaiju for the most part uh, done in extremely high quality detail and done with really really well engineered and really well hidden articulation. I mean it's not hidden obviously you can see it's articulated but it's done in a way that s when you move it around it smooths out the, the, the joints and everything. It's really really well done expensive figures too. <laughs> okay, so we got our figure, the tail's popped off, first thing out of the box, that's no problem, it's happened with dozens of other Monster Arts figures that I've gotten, which is never a problem because they can always just pop right back on, which is the brilliant thing about these ones. I'm just gonna take his little tail here and the little hole and just pop that right back in, maybe fix up this ball joint, looks like it's bent down a little bit. There we go. And there we go, pops right in just like I knew it would. Oh, look at that. Nice smooth articulation in the tail there. Always a great thing with these figures. Oh, I, I love the feeling of a brand new Monster Arts figure. The texture on these things is always so great. And I popped off the chest because I guess I was trying to see if he can lean back a little more. But he's kind of limited by his spines and the articulation there. The neck's got some nice articulation, and look at that face. Ah, don't worry guys, I'll bring him in close in a sec. I'm just going to take him in for a little bit. Already, guys, I can tell you this guy looks a lot better in person than in pretty much any photo that I've seen, except for actually the promotional art that they have on the box itself. This thing looks great. Ah, I'm so glad they finally did this Godzilla, because it's... It's a very unique Godzilla design. He's very slimmed down for a lot of the action scenes that they had in the film. It's a far more action-oriented Godzilla. In fact, this is probably one of the most powerful Godzillas in the whole canon, hands down. Surprisingly, he doesn't come with a beam, because this guy's beam was, like, one of the most powerful things in the Godzilla universe, I swear. It could take out Kaiju one after the other like it's nobody's business, but... Again, I'm not too picky about these figures not coming with beams, and again, this guy was more reasonably priced than a lot of the more recent Monster Arts figures we've gotten, uh, the uh, <clears throat> 2021 Mechagodzilla, um, although I do love that figure regardless. But uh, for what it is, it is very nice. You can tell it's hand sculpted. I think this is probably almost certainly, again, a Yuji Sakai sculpt as is almost all of the Monster Arts line that isn't done uh, from the CGI data from films, for example, or mechas, or anything like that. So the sculpt is impeccable on this guy. Articulation-wise, really, really nice. I messed around with him just very quickly off camera in between cuts, and I really dig this thing. There was initially some gapping with his uh, shoulders here, but they're really easy to fix up because there's barbell joints in those shoulders. So all you got to do is hold this quite firmly and just push it up. And that closes up the gap at the top of his arm. No problem. A lot of people complain about these Monster Arts figures because if they bend them in certain ways, 
you start to see little gaps through them, like you see a bit of light pouring through under his armpit there and near his leg there. And that stuff doesn't bother me because that's just this figure showing its limitations when you start pulling it in weird ways and start like trying to peer inside it. But you can close those gaps if you want to, but the option is there so they have enough space so that you can do all manner of movements with them if you so desire as well. So it just, you know, gives you all those options. Another cool thing about this figure is he's got very unique spines. They're kind of like a, a mishmash between the classic Showa era spines, but they're also still a little bit uh, more spiky, like the traditional Millennium era spines that some of the other Millennium era Godzillas are known for. So this one is a nice mishmash of those two. Also slightly smaller spines as well, which I think was probably also an adaptation for this guy being a little more action-oriented. It helps him be a little bit more nimble and for the suit to be a little less breakable as well, I imagine. Ah, real cool. And this guy has just just the cutest, like, sort of ratty, almost cat-like face. There's actually some really funny memes out there where they, they have photos of this Godzilla suit next to just random cat expressions and because he has the very prominent little uh, fangs at the front, they look really similar. Just bringing him in. Again, looks nicer in person and my lighting's not great for these close-ups because it's a little bit a little bit too dark and a little bit harsh in some areas, but you get a good sense of that detailing. He feels really, really nice and sharply detailed as all good monster arts figures are. Spines are really nicely painted. They look just like they did in the film, got that sort of frosty white colour to them, looking very, very nice. And they're painted pretty much all the way down up till yeah pretty much all the way down really nicely just got some dry brushing across those to bring those out i have some minor issues i guess with the paint on his toes here on his claws they it looks a little bit how do i put it creamy <laughs> a little bit too opaque they usually blend the the paint a lot better for claws and things or at least make it a little more sharply done to the sculpt it looks a little bit like it's just a bit too much where the 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 bone claw kind of meets the gray of his foot there it's a little bit over spilling and i'm not too fond of that uh, the color they chose is pretty good it's like sort of a beigey browny color sometimes I, f I feel like this godzilla had slightly more yellowed claws than other godzillas so it's kind of fitting they went for more of a browny color i do really like the inside of the mouth this godzilla had sort of a more purpley mouth interior actually and it's kind of reflected on the figure here really nicely so that's really cool one thing i was worried about is in some shots i've seen people posing this guy he didn't feel quite like the same build as the Godzilla in the film. He felt a little bulkier in the figure here and he might just be a touch bulkier around the hips than he was in the film because all Monster Arts figures really have slightly wider hips I've noticed than the movie equivalent and that's really to just get those joints in there. So they have sort of a more splayed stance than they sort of would in the movie where they have more of a humanoid slightly more straight down stance but Regardless, still looks great as is. And from what I've seen in person of this guy, he does really resemble the build of this Godzilla in the film. I think when I was looking at those photos that people were taking, they were just posing him weirdly and pushing this, this sculpt and this figure to its sort of extremes. So it really kind of distorts the overall build of this guy. Let's see if we can't get a nice, good look at his face there. And don't you just love that? I love this, this version of Godzilla's snout. And they really capture that red, glowy, orangey color of his eyes really well there. Now, all these details are so tiny that on camera, they do look almost a little bit messy. But when you look at it in person, it's actually a really clean paint sculpt, I think. And I've actually got um, kind of poor eyesight for long distance and actually enhanced eyesight for close-up details. So I can really tell if a figure is painted messy or not. And this guy's actually done quite nicely, which again, with some of the photos that I've seen of this guy, people, I don't know whether it's the lighting or they're using flash on the camera or something, but it makes the paintwork look just not quite as nice as it really does in person as well. Yeah, but this guy looks great. And that sculpt, so nice. Really captures the look of this Godzilla. And I'm sorry I'm shaking this guy. It's really hard to 
hold him steady and also monitor whether I'm actually holding him in focus on, on my uh, monitoring screen as well. <laughs> really cool. You can see he's got his nice jaw articulation there. The jaw's on a ball joint like a lot of Monster Arts figures, not a hinge, so you can kind of make him look a little derpy if you want. He's got some nice range of movement in the neck. This guy's neck is actually nice and firm feeling, the, the ball joints, but it has a lot of posability because there's really no spines at the back to kind of hinder it there. So it's got a lot of potential for movement. Look at that. I love the uh, that, that texture on the chest. That's very, very uh, clearly a Yuji Sakai sculpt with the, the texturing there. Just You can see that it's originally sculpted in clay. Also looks like there's some dry brush lighter grays across him there in this lighting. In person he looks pretty much uh, solid charcoal gray, but just in his crotch region there on those scales. I don't know, it could be a trick of the light, but it looks like there's a different color paint kind of just dry brush there, so that's nice. Yeah, and across the knees there, so yeah, he's definitely definitely got some paint variation on him. So, oh, or maybe it's just the shadows. I don't know guys, I apologize. Under his foot there, you've got some of that legal detail. Oh, Vietnam. That's interesting. So this guy's made in Vietnam as opposed to China. That's new. I'm pretty sure even, even the last uh, Monster Arts figure I looked at was made in China. We'll bring in the 89 figure here, and that's made in China. The 89 is made in China. What about the Mechagodzilla? This was the actual last Monster Arts figure I got, and doesn't say. It says Legend Legendary Godzilla Trademark Toho. Uh, maybe on this side. Yep, China. Okay, so this guy was made in China. Looks like they've moved production to Vietnam for at least this figure. Interesting. I'm not complaining at all about that, because this one seems very well done. So back to this guy's sculpt. Yeah, look at that. It's the derpy jaw. <laughs> uh, the face, again, looks really cool. And I love the pose of his hands. He's got these lovely splayed hands with the big bony claws on them. Very reminiscent of the actual film. I really dig that. Ah, uh, look at that. Lovely, very powerful looking legs. Even though he's, you know, sl more slender than a lot of Godzilla's, he's still got a very powerful build to him. And then we have the tail. Let's have a look at that. Nice long tail. Culminates in a nice tip. So unlike a lot of Godzilla's with the more rounded tail, this guy has a more pointy t tip to his tail, which kind of fits with the overall angular look of this Godzilla. And this guy has... Nice range of articulation. Look at that. Get a good bend out of that. It's not quite as articulated as some of the other tails, but it does feel really nice and organic, and there's a lot of ball joints in this thing. Almost down to like this little nub here. It's all segmented, so a good amount of ball joints there. And again, the texturing on those spines alone, so nice. So, so nice. Really sweet. So I do have a bunch of other figures to compare this guy to. So as I previously pulled out, I've got the Mechagodzilla figure, which is the Mechagodzilla from Godzilla vs. Kong. This is the last Monster Arts figure I actually got in my collection. So it's apt to compare the two, because they're the two most near releases. You can see this Mechagodzilla is very big compared to this guy here. and. Actually, that might be somewhat accurate, because this Godzilla was about 100 meters tall in-universe. Uh, this Mecha Godzilla, I don't remember how big exactly he was, but he was about as big, if not slightly taller, than the Legendary Pictures Godzilla. And that one's like 120 meters high. So, these two actually might scale roughly about this height. Maybe this guy should be a little little bit smaller, give or take, but this isn't a bad comparison, actually. Kind of interesting, because this Mecha Godzilla is actually probably a touch too big to go with our actual Monsterverse Godzilla figures from Monster Arts. So that's interesting. 
I have the Bandai vinyl over here. I think this one's probably the one that came out when the film did. Yeah, it's the Japanese uh, Bandai vinyl. The 6 inch, inch scale one, I also have the bigger one because they released a much bigger one as well. They scale pretty close. Pretty close. And for a Bandai vinyl, the ones that they put out for the movie Godzilla Final Wars were actually really decent. Uh, all of them, I have a, a bunch of other ones here. Uh, they actually did a really good job at uh, capturing the kaijus quite effectively and making them look really movie accurate. You actually get a good sense of both these figures actually being pretty close to what he looked like in the film. There's some differences in proportion with this guy and the scaling and stuff like that. But uh, they are really, really similar and really similar in just overall scale as well. This guy's got a, maybe a bigger head on him, uh, slightly smaller proportions on his body. And actually maybe more of a more accurate pose to him than kind of the, the way his chest and body kind of proportions of his legs. But again, I'd have to actually take a look at the film to really compare. So this guy also is very reminiscent of that too. I've got the Bandai Movie Monster Series Gigan 2004 figure as well. These pair really nicely actually because this Bandai vinyl is really well made for a Bandai vinyl again from that same film. They scale really nicely together so that's great. And the figure that this guy was kind of made for the SH Monster Arts Final Wars Gigan, the decisive battle version, so the new release, the re-release of it basically. And yeah, they look great together. I'm definitely going to be pairing these two together on the shelf. This Gigan has those like additions with all the like cabling and stuff that he shoots at Godzilla in the film. So I can finally actually try putting these together and assembling all of that stuff. And I might do a photo shoot of that and put it on the Atomic Final Reviews Instagram page. So, so stay tuned for that because I do try and upload re regular photos on my Instagram of my figures and stuff like that. And that one will be really cool, I imagine. Here we've got the 2000 and... Is it 2002 or 2003? Godzilla from Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. And this is basically the previous design of Godzilla before this one showed up in 2004. And they both look so good together. Oh, really cool. Really cool. We got more of our Millennium Godzillas. Uh, what I would really like is if they redid the Godzilla 2000 Millennium version. Because I, I freaking adore. And this is, to, to date, one of my favorite figures in my entire collection. I've got the original release. Millennium Godzilla from Monster Arts here, but it's the concept design that Yuji Sakai did for the film. It's not the full-on movie accurate version of a different looking face and slightly different posture. If they redid this one in a more movie accurate version and re released a version of the um, Tokyo SOS Godzilla here, that would be really cool. We'd have all the Millennium Godzillas at that point, unless I'm missing one, which I, I think I am not. So that would be really awesome and something which I hope to see one day. Oh, and there is the Megagirus one. They could just completely forget the Millennium one and put out a Megagirus one, which I know is technically considered a different suit from the 2000, well, 1999 Millennium one. But it still looks so close to that one that if they put it out, it would be even closer to a original Godzilla 2000 Millennium than, than this one would be. I, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully some of you guys understand what I'm trying to say with that. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to our next figure to compare. We got the 30 centimeter series X Plus Godzilla 2004 figure. I really love this guy, this uh, this figure here, but I actually think I prefer the Monster Arts here. They're both really great figures, but I almost think the Monster Arts is slightly more movie accurate, and the sculpt on him is actually just as crisp, I'd say, despite being are easily half the size, if not less, of this guy here. But uh, yeah, both of these figures are really great. You can tell I really dig this particular version of Godzilla. There you guys go. Again, this one... This one does have a slightly bigger head, so maybe the head on the Monster Arts is slightly smaller than it should be, or... I don't know, it's just the proportion of the body that I think... Compared to some other figures, it just generally leans on the beefier side. But I don't, again, t really necessarily know if it's not movie accurate or not. I'd have to actually look at some stills from the film, for example. 
wanted to bring in this guy here, which is the 89 Godzilla, which is one of the last Godzillas that Monster Arts put out, or at least that I managed to get my hands on from Monster Arts. And these two, ah, oh, they pair so nicely. I was really, really happy with this 89 here, and again, good to see that Monster Arts are keeping up the good work, because this guy here looks great again. Very nice. That's probably going to be it for this video today. I don't really know much more of what to say about this guy. I'm just really happy with this thing. It's just a well-built, very, very classic, movie-accurate looking version of the Final Wars Godzilla. And it's done very well in all the bestest quality that you'd expect from Monster Arts. Aside from a few nitpicks here and there, again, the paint on the claws, I don't know. I'm not fully happy with how they did that. And I'm just not sure if the proportions are entirely accurate to the film. It's either his body feels a little bit too bulky or his head feels a little bit too small. But other than that, this figure is really, really good. So I'm really happy about that. And I'm excited for the Monster X figure that they're putting out because it'll pair really nicely with this guy here. And I hope they do more Final Wars Kaiju. I would really... Love an Anguirus, or a King Caesar, or maybe even a 1998 Godzilla. I'd actually prefer them to do just the 1998 movie version, not the Final Wars one, because the Final Wars one, they actually got the CGI data to make that version of the 1998 Godzilla from a Trendmasters toy. Not this exact one, but the really big one, which I think has almost an identical sculpt to this guy here, which is a little six-inch Trendmasters figure, which... Actually kind of pairs nicely with this guy now that I think of it. <laughs> so that's cool. But I wouldn't actually mind a 1998. I share most people's criticisms of that film and of, of the design of that kaiju. I don't really consider it Godzilla, but uh, it's still a cool kaiju design. Regardless, really cool monster arts figure. I recommend picking this one up if you guys can. So that is it for today. I hope to see you in one of my future videos. But until then... May all your vinyl be a rated vinyl. Over and out. Bye.